so we are live hello friends and today we are again live with our day 3 next session which is creating long form content like blog post which get read read and shared so before uh, before i want to start the session i would like to request you all to just share this fb live to your timeline or in other groups so that more and more people get the uh, a uh, benefit of this free sessions so sir is 359 will wait for one minute i am cool i'm cool use you when you tell me start i'll share my screen now. yeah yeah so i think already five people have started guys if you are able to hear us properly then please mention this into the comment section if you are able to hear i am cool and could you when you tell me start i share my screen yeah, yeah. So, i think already five people have been. <laughs> you can make that mute yeah, yeah. so i think six people has already and please uh, guys if you are able to hear us properly able to see us please mention into the comment section right type hi i think uh, facebook is start sending notification to the people slowly slowly Yeah, I guess we've currently got uh, Ashish is in. Yes, he's saying he's saying that yeah, he can hear and see us. First four zero one, sir, you can share and you can start. Okay, very cool. I'll just share my screen. Give me a hi. second. Hi, hi, Mahesh, Ashish. So yeah, people are started joining. So let me share yes. Okay, okay guys. Um, yeah, I think we are able to see. Just we we will just get the confirmation. Guys, if yeah. you are able to see the screen of Ivan sir. Yeah. I, okay. I checked in mobile. It's shown. Fair. Yeah, sir. You we can go ahead with the share. Okay. Now there are you know there are there are there have been there have been any number of Facebook lives that have been conducted on. Uh, creating long form content now let me i'd like to elaborate just a brief a few seconds on this term long form content normally uh, normally there is a group of bloggers me first where we believe that we create a blog post it should be at least 1500 words if not more if you go on to some of the places where i blog most of my blog posts are the how to type so i don't talk about the what or the why i actually give uh, as much information as i can how to do something with screen grabs and an explanation and all and these blog posts are almost always greater than 1500 words so they are long blog blog posts which is why we call them long form content now there are any number of people that have spoken about how to create long form content in blog posts i am not going to take that route today i thought i'd take a slightly different route i'd like to talk to whoever is participating in this facebook live about the concept of content curation very very many bloggers especially people like me who write damn long blog posts there are times when you get into a a mindset where you don't know what to write you have no clue what the heck to write uh when you don't know what to write you get a block and that block could last for a couple of days until you unravel it now how do you stay engaged with your people either on your blog post or in social shares at the time when you have a mental block what i use is something called content curation and i'd like uh all of you guys to understand that it's pretty simple pretty easy it's gathering relevant high quality value add content for your target audience on a specific topic of interest usually with the attention of adding value so as a blogger i have to gather relevant high quality value add content for my target audience and this could be for different topics of interest it could be for blogging it could be for search engine optimization it could be for content marketing content curation 
whatever whatever topic of interest i have at that time going on uh, that i've been blogging on or parallel topics that i'd like to talk about i would go out and i would search for high quality value add content with the use with the intent of adding value to that now it's a three step process and it's pretty simple you find this content you curate it now curate it is where the person who is you know wanting to share that content with others is going to add value to it there's something that you're going to add to the content that you found and what that is we look at in a little while and then air it and you will share this on all your social streams now why we share it you know what the drivers are i'll we'll take a look at in a minute or two so what do you do when you share when you curate content very very importantly is you must add your voice to that content now, how do you do this you take someone's content and you add your opinions about that content whatever content you're sharing it could be somebody else's blog post something from neel patel perhaps something from uh, joanna vibe something from nk on content content creation content marketing headline creation tips i don't really care you will share somebody's you you will share the link to that person's but you will also add your opinions you will explain why that content you are sharing has added measurable value to you so that people that trust you people that believe in you they understand why you are sharing that content especially the key takeaways that you obtained when you studied that content when you do all of this it's all part of building trust with your readers now only when readers trust you probably implicitly implicitly will they keep coming back for more and more and as that trust builds you're going to see sales will happen so what's today's content delivery plan 2020 today's content delivery plan is not about creating epic new content every day now there was a time when you sat down and you actually created i simply wrote 1500 word blog posts almost every day every two days it takes me about 3 and 1/2 4 hours of research and typing churn out a 1500 2000 word blog post with appropriate uh, you know free images and stuff like that but today it's not about that today it's about finding engaging value add content created by others and sharing this in your blog so you will actually create a blog post in your blog and you will put you know you will go and extract maybe the headline maybe the first paragraph then underneath that first paragraph you will write your opinion why you consider that that content is worth sharing what were your takeaways what value you got from it and you will add a url and you will give full acknowledgement to the original content creator now never ever be miserly someone else has created that content play the white man give that content creator total acknowledgement for the hard work that they've done in your blog post but there must be a link that points to their blog post now one of the questions is thrown thrown at me very very often is how do you how do i find content to curate for a newbie this can be quite challenging the simplest way to do it is go to google and type in great places to curate content from and google will show you tons and tons and tons of places now this could get again a little overwhelming for a newbie when you when it's getting a little overwhelming for a newbie don't generalize don't say curate content from but say great places to curate content creation from great places to curate blogging from great places to create curate seo information from narrow down become a little bit more specific and again you'll find tons of stuff but it will be more pointed to what it is that you need now 
I have written a free ebook. It's a 24 page ebook. I've really taken trouble over these huh? So, uh, and I'm sharing it, I'm giving it away free. Uh, uh, where, which are the best places that I curate content from. Now, I don't curate one kind of content alone. I curate content across the digital marketing spectrum. So I could be curating content about social media marketing, social sharing, <coughs> search engine optimization, search engine marketing, creating uh, a digital marketing strategy, executing the digital marketing strategy, tools for monitoring the digital marketing. And I curate all. I curate a heck of a lot of heck of a lot of content across all of these topics and this everybody who's attending this facebook live session you'll have taken a great deal of trouble to leave whatever you're doing and actually sit down and spend time and spend time with anamitra and me during this live session so i'm giving it away free to everyone who's attended this live session you have to connect with anamitra on facebook messenger and he'll give you the download link. And that could be a good place to start your content curation exercises on. So what is the kind of content that pure pros curate and how do they do this? You know, they collect value add content like blog posts. You can look for other people writing blog posts on topics of your choice. And there are some real authority, authority bloggers look at their blogs. You can look for how to type tutorials. You can look for educated, educative infographics. You can look for educative videos on YouTube. You can look for podcasts. You can look for interviews, specific interviews in podcasts, ebooks, white papers, evergreen webinars. A lot of the evergreen webinars on specific topics are given away free. You know, you can take those webinars and curate them and other such content. Now, what do you do with them? You categorize the content that you've created. If you remember, when you, when, if you're using WordPress and you're publishing your blog post in WordPress, you can create different categories. And under each category, you can create a tutorial category, an infographics category, a video category, a podcast category. You can put all this content under different categories and share content about podcasts, videos, infographics from various authority figures. That's when your site visitors learn they don't have to search for all of this content themselves. You're delivering it to them. And this is a big thing, believe me. Now, how does content curation create value for the site owner? Now, I'm a blogger. I curate a lot of content. How the heck does it add value to me? Now, most site visitors have a limited amount of time. When they find everything that they need on your website, they'll become loyal, repeat visitors to your site. They'll also go on to recommend your site to friends and family. That's when they become your advocates. They tell their friends and family, you want to know anything about um, content marketing? <coughs> go to Ivan's blog. If you want to know stuff about digital marketing strategies, go to Ivan's blog. Because Ivan doesn't write content only about himself. He's also sharing stuff from Joanna Vaibe, from Neil Patel. And he's choosing the stuff that he's sharing, which is really top class. Go to one place, you'll find every damn thing you need. And now others are actually driving people to your website for absolute, absolutely free. They know <coughs> you're working hard at finding and delivering the best content to them. You're adding, adding measurable value to them. Every time they visit, they'll find something of value, something new, maybe a free download, a PDF, a checklist form, maybe like I said, Neil Patel, Joanna Vaibe, Henny K, all that's available on in your blog. And that is when a huge amount of trust builds between the site visit and now, if you're doing a bit of affiliate marketing or if you've got products and services that you're selling on your website, trust me, this is when sales actually begin to happen. Now, you can also curate content in newsletters. You know, emailed use newsletters it's, is very popular. You can curate the latest content 
put it in a newsletter and it drives engagement. Curate content that adds measurable value to your mailing list and blog post readers. You know, you know them, you're intimate with them. So choose the kind of content that they want. Place this content in an attractively formatted newsletter. Now, most third party email pro providers will give you will give you empty, empty formats. All you've got to do is pick up the content and place it there and just bang it out to your mailing list. There's very little work that you will have to do. Now, another place is share it on social media. These are terrific places to share curated content. When you do, always hashtag the original creator when you're sharing the content. Tell them that you are sharing their content. You could even send them an email and say, look, I've shared this blog post of yours. I've shared this. I've shared this white paper of yours. I've shared this case study of yours. Email them. You know why? They then start looking for your content and sharing your content for to their to their readers. Now, if they are, let's say, authority bloggers, they have five lakh, two lakh, one lakh, fifty thousand. 6 lakh people who are all part of their or part of their group and those people now start coming to blog post this is the time you can sit back and watch your site visitors multiply when your site visitors multiply they find great content on your site trust builds and sales happen using a simple technique like content curation to create long form content. Now that brings us to the end of the pitch that I'm making. And now the show, I'll leave the show floor open to, uh, to site to anyone who wants to ask questions. Uh, yeah, here we go. You can stop sharing if you want. Uh, I'd like to look uh, for those of you who see this. You know, you can you, th these URLs also. I'll send to Anamitra. How to content cro uh, curate content like a pro with eight lessons examples. Now, Hidi Cohen. You know, she's another copywriter that I follow. Joanna Vaide, Henike. You hear me using these names consistently because I think these are top of the line top of the line content people yeah Hidi Cohen and here are uh, here is content with with actual examples man. I mean uh, if you study this consistently you can you can be a top class you can be a top class curator now there are also there are also uh, uh, you know posts like this you get content curation plugins that you can put into WordPress you simply tell the plugin what kind of content that you want to curate the, that plugin will go and search for similar content and then it gives you a very, very simple drag and drop way of adding, adding your stuff to, to your WordPress blog. You know, so you're not really depending on yourself. So, okay, now I'm stopping sharing and getting back to StreamYard and questions. Now, any kind of questions you'd like to ask me? Yeah, about if, I'm open. If you guys, if you have any question, just ask in the comment section. And I will take one by one. Okay. There is one, there is one thing I can read. How to write SEO friendly content, and we rank in first page and more keywords. Now let me tell you something. I have been on the internet. Uh, I even bearos.com. If you go to who is W H O I S, uh, who's this? You'll you can see I even bearos. I've been there on the internet for at least 35, 38 years. I have stopped worrying about creating SEO friendly content. I create content that users want to read that will add humongous value to my readers. Now, okay, I also check out a few keywords now and then, but I am, I have long time ago. Now, if you go, you go on ivanbearers.com, you'll find about 300, 400 blog posts. You come to School of Digital Marketing, you'll find about 180, 200 blog posts. All of them 1,500, 2,000 words in length. You know, my blog posts come up 
with the best with the best of with the best of the other blog posts and i'm not really focused on 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 seo friendly content when you tie your mind to writing the right headline getting the keyword in the headline putting in links to the keyword in it i think we forget to create valuable stuff for other human beings so that's my approach to it so i i hope i i hope i haven't turned you off whoever that guy is or whoever that person is because i can't see the darn name yeah also siddharth siddharth has asked question when we post other people content in our blog post what's the chance of getting backlinks from the followers of those people kindly share your experience on the same uh now actually the way i understood this is let's say i go to neel patel and i share a neel patel's blog i write something i curate it that means i take his headline i take his i take his picture his his image and his first paragraph or maybe two paragraphs and then i write about two paragraphs of why i found that content valuable and i put a link there i very very clearly give neel patel 100% acknowledgement now mind you neel patel has got lakhs of followers i not only get my content shared by his followers i actually had authority bloggers like neel patel share my content because when i i not only put this out in my blog post i also have a social calendar a, you know social social posting so i post this up i hashtag neel patel in or i hashtag the person in and i say i am incredibly impressed with the with the high quality of the stuff you given and i really wanted my people to benefit from it so i've curated your content and i put it in my and i hashtag it in facebook i put it out in twitter i put it out in linkedin i put it out in instagram pinterest and these guys actually so i'm getting shares from the authority bloggers themselves and i'm also getting shares from their followers and that really is when people begin to notice you okay. next question is monish has asked hi as a new b in this field will knowledge of writing content help in curation also well you know curation actually has to have your opinion about the curated content embedded now if you take out that element then you're not curating you're just creating a link to somebody else's post you're not adding any value to the curated content that you've put into your blog post so unless you can write decently grammatically correct now let me tell you i am dyslexic i have been dyslexic i did my mtech in the uk i studied in manchester i had a medical certificate given from the yavarali jung uh institute in bombay to the college principal in manchester saying that i am dyslexic dyslexic means i can't spell so if you look at some of i mean that would mean that i can't write i can't blog now i've published 84 books you go into amazon.com in the author section type i even beros you'll see my books now i use tools i use a lot of tools to check my spelling and check my grammar and things like that and years and years of blessed, blessed writing uh i have i've become a bit better at it but i am dyslexic which is a big no no for writers so you got to make the effort when you when you put in your when you put in your curation your curation content underneath your opinion your reasons why you're curating that content check the english grammar check the adjectives you have used check the adverbs you have used let it be top class because when you do that the the leader of the you know the the authority blogger that put out he he or she feels damn happy here and they in turn look for your content and share it so yes you should you should be able to write now whether you're a newbie or someone old and experienced it doesn't really matter take care to deliver quality look at your spellings look at your english grammar constructs and stuff like that if you deliver quality that word newbie will never even be recognized okay jaya sarup ask an interesting question does content curator become content writer so it's, it's the other way around jaya you have to be a content writer first 
and then you can begin to curate content you need to be a blogger you need to understand the kind of topics that your audience likes you need to identify authority bloggers that's also writing blogs about the same kind of content so it's the other way around i mean all of this content curation copywriting all of this evolves out of good quality content creation so you got to be a content writer first at least that's why okay ashish is asking how to curate content in an instagram as the organic reach is completely dead there how to engage user on instagram platform specifically any suggestion well so, i have a very specific answer to that when you know that you've got that your audience is not on a specific channel now there are there are multiple social channels okay when you know that your audience is not on a social channel for goodness sake don't waste your time and energy posting anything there find a social channel a typical audience the audience that you want to interact with are available in modest to large numbers now let me quantify that i do not post in facebook groups that have got 1 lakh people as their group members i diligently search for facebook groups that have got between 1500 and 5000 group members and i work damn hard to give those people value because those people are a lot more engaged than groups where you got 1 lakh 2 lakhs 3 lakhs of that you will find 90 90% perhaps are just inactive people so my answer to that question is if you say reach is completely dead don't post this don't waste your time and energy doing that okay even uh, reaches reaches that but uh, even the now facebook group or facebook page everywhere the organic reach is very less so you have to keep posting keep engaging try to gain the trust and of course the facebook post or the instagram post should not be very long content okay it should be short crisp and should engage the people yes yeah, it's, it's not a, it's not a channel for long form content yeah. type it's not a, your blog that people are there okay akula again ask a question content writers they research on net but we can't depend on the information completely which already there we should write unique and new things how can we write any subject which we don't have a idea that turn on so there are three of the two three there are two three there are about three different things that are asked in that one question let me take the first one content writer they research in the net but they can't depend on net information i don't know how to interpret that correctly but if you are saying that a lot of information on the internet is bogus is rubbish i agree with you completely when you are doing research on the internet all good copywriters or content creators have studied google advanced search techniques now you can use google advanced search techniques on google you can use it in bing you can use it in duckduckgo you can use it in the meta search engines now google is not the only damn search engine i mean i search about four or five different search engines and i also search meta search engine but let's let's not get into that area now when you use advanced search techniques like uh you know some topic let's say um, curate colon seo seo now when you separate your question colon something uh, google google focuses on the colon and whatever you written after the colon and it will start giving you far more accurate results so if you are not finding the right content then my advice is learn to search and identify the right content the second question is we need to write unique and new things yes you need to write unique and new things pick up a paragraph this is how all copywriters and bloggers grew i grew like that i pick up a paragraph from neil patel paste it in paste it in microsoft word and then sentence by sentence i read the damn sentence and see how i can rewrite it in my own words 
Now, if I can rewrite it in my own words, negative sentence, make them positive, positive sentence, make them negative, add adjectives, add adverbs and stuff like that, I am learning how to generate stuff. But I am learning how to do it based on somebody else's vast experience. Now, after you've done that for about six months, one year, genuine practice, two hours a day, you'll be able to create the content, your own content very easily. Yeah. Now, the last bit where we can write any subject where we don't have idea the ter terminology. Uh, let me be honest about that. If you have no idea about the terminology, you cannot write content on that subject. So unless you spend your time learning about that, learning the technology, learning the content that should be given to others, learning what kind of, there are used tools like uh, BuzzSumo, I'll type in the, you know, I'll type in what I want to find in Basu and say, tell me what is trending. I'll look at the number of people leaving content, comments because Basu not only will it show you, let's say, the top 10 blog posts, it will show you how many people have commented. It will show you what the kind of comments are. It will show you the keywords. So I learn from that. And once I've got that, then I create my terminology. Out of your head, you can't. Ashish is asking a question, sir. Do you feel content? Repurposing is a great way to make yourself known on all social platform after we are done with curating content. Yes. Single straight upfront answer. Yes. All bloggers do it. And I do this extensively for my US clients. I repurpose content for the, those guys who are a little puzzled about the word repurposing. Okay. You write a 1500 page, 1500 word blog post. Okay. In that blog post, let us say you've got five, one headline and five subheadlines. You can cut the headline, take a little bit of your first paragraph and pick up an entirely new image from somewhere, club it all together, post it on, post it in Facebook with a link back to the original blog post. You can repeat this exercise for all the subheadlines. That means you take the subheadline, you take the paragraph immediately under that subheadline. You take a picture from somewhere else and again point back to the original blog post. Okay, pointing back to the same content, but the content that you're putting out, Facebook is fresh. You can take that content and make a one minute video. You can take that content and put it into a tool. There are a lot of free tools. If you've got a 1500, 2000 word uh, blog post, they'll convert it to a PDF. You So you can convert your blog post to PDF, give it away as a freebie. So yes, man, repurposing content is something that digital marketers, uh, we live by it. I mean, to me, it's like having a bath, changing my clothes kind of thing. Make, make a video, PPT, PDF, podcast, whatever you feel comfortable. Take your, take your blog post, read it out slowly and nicely and create a podcast. Publish it. Put it into app. They'll take it. Yeah. One more question from Ashish. Sir, do you feel Quora is a great platform to know what your customer pain points are and then creating a curated blog post around the question they are asking? Is that good strategy to create, uh, create traffic generation for your blog pertaining to your niche? <laughs> uh, one word answer. Yes. See, I, I don't know whether you realize it. You've got a platform where you can figure out people's wants, needs, and pain very clearly. Okay, there's a lot of bullshit in, in bloody Quora, but when you start filtering, you, you can figure out wants, needs, and pain. Now, you can take those wants, needs, and pain distilled into words and key them in, in keywords into, let's say, for example, Buzzsumo. Buzzsumo will give you the top 10 blog posts for those particular, those particular keywords. Now, there are people in pain in Quora you can go to Quora and post links and say, go and read this blog post. You can create your own blog post and post your link and say, come and read from me. So, I mean, yes. this is what I do all the time. I mean, absolutely correct. I mean, yeah. From the Quora, you you can know their pain and all and then write your content, curate your content. Okay. Jaya, I hope I've answered your question earlier on when I spoke about repurposing content. Mm -hmm. I hope I hope I did that. If you if I if I didn't, then maybe ask it again and I'll try and elaborate. Monish again asks, if we are told to write article on any random topic, what strategies should we use? That is, 
how should we go about assuming we do not have any domain knowledge about that topic see i i am a writer and i face this problem every day i mean uh, you know i could i could get for example uh, an an article to be written about a hospital where i'm selling oncology oncology by the way is is cancer yeah. or i could get a i could get an article where i need to write 200 say 1000 words on yoga on Sh- sudarshan kriya you get bloody vague stuff yaar where the hell do i am? so what i do is i use a tool like hubspot uh, or i'll use a tool like uh, buzzsumo something like this and i'll go and key these keywords in and i'll find out what other people are writing about it and i will spend maybe 2 3 hours reading other people's material and identifying ideas paragraphs remember you know when you put when you put words together and form a sentence and when you club sentences together into a paragraph you are actually selling as a writer you are actually selling an idea now the really good copywriters will keep one idea in one paragraph so it's damn easy to figure out and i copy paste all of that into a word file so i get what i call a site file so i'll take the first three blogs on sudarshan kriya i hope i'm pronouncing that thing correct i'm not really sure of it and when i've got that i'll pick up what neel patel wrote about sudarshan kriya what anike wrote about sudarshan kriya what anamitra wrote about sudarshan kriya and i'll have this in my swipe file and i'll mix and match ideas first then i'll spin these sentences and put my own language my own adjectives my own adverbs and then i'll publish this is what i keep doing all the time okay i think this was the last question from munis okay so, yeah do you, if you guys if you have any other question you just in the comment we will be here for one more minute and uh, for that uh, the freebie you just as ivan sir told that you have to just message me on the messenger fb messenger and i will give you the link to download so sir i think we can wrap up this call excellent there's no so thank you very much for <laughs> for taking this session and guys thank you very much for joining this session at both <laughs> of guys thanks for spending time with us deeply appreciated be safe stay healthy and let's let's build let's build at let's build assets during this time bye now see you guys bye, bye. take care